Hey there, welcome back to the channel. This is the frame from a 1978 True Spirit Dodge truck. It started out all rusty. It looked a lot like this. In order to get it to this point, it took about 40 hours of work. It was a whole lot of work. It was really dirty. It took me a long time since I'm only working on this, you know, evenings, weekends kind of thing. It actually took me, I think, about two months to get here. I'm real happy with how it turned out, so let's go take a look how I got to this point. As you can see, this frame's got a lot of scaly rust on here. I need to get it nice and clean before I coat it. We've got big sections of this scaly rust. We have areas that have this finer, more powdery rust. Areas that are coated in looks like dirt and rust. And then areas that are coated in oil and probably have very little rust just a lot of dirt and uh, grease. I got a wire wheel, some flap discs, and some of these, I don't know what they're called, an abrasive disc anyway. I'm going to give all three of those a try. I've also got some flex cut discs. That's probably more aggressive than I really want to do on here. I just want to get the rust off. I really don't want to take a lot of metal off. Once I get that done, I'm going to use some of this Eastwood Rust Encapsulator. I just went to the Eastwood store and purchased it, so it's not given to me or sponsored or anything. Eastwood has a storefront fairly close to me, so it's convenient. I've had good luck with this stuff in the past, so I'm going to continue using it. Once I've got it encapsulated, I'm then going to go over it again with this chassis black. This is a satin version. They also make a gloss version, but I'm not a big fan of gloss, so let's get started. The wire wheel is doing great for taking off the scale. This looks like it's still got some, I don't know, maybe factory chassis coating on it in places. I don't know that I have to actually get all of that off, but We'll use the abrasive and see how that does on that when we get around to it. After removing that scaly rust, it looks like there's a coating on this frame. It's either coated or it has some interesting pitting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use an abrasive next, and we'll go over this and see how it looks. We're going to try one of these silica abrasive discs next. That's a much better surface. Let's try just starting with this abrasive disc. No wire wheel. That seems to be pretty good. It goes pretty quick and gets all the way down to the metal pretty fast. Here's the downside of this. I've done about maybe two feet and this is only on the face. I haven't done the top or bottom. And this is new. So it's worn this quite a bit. I think that's probably at least 30% gone. So you'd go through quite a few of these doing a whole frame. With the wire wheel, I've done the entire other side of this frame, top rail and the flat face. And there's still a lot left on it. So this is definitely gonna be less expensive. Since we're testing things out, I'm gonna try a 60 grit flap disc. It looks like it cleans it about as well as the abrasive, maybe not quite as good. It also seems to last a little bit better. For areas with a lot of grease, use the wire wheel first to remove all of that. Otherwise it will clog up things like a flap disc or that abrasive. Another area I really have concerns about cleaning is in here. So this is where the front of the rear spring attaches. You can see we've got this cross member that comes across and then this brace. They're all riveted in. 
right now I'm thinking this brace I'm actually going to remove those four rivets so that I can get down inside there and then clean this and then I'll bolt this back in not a real big fan of bolting things that were factory riveted but I don't see much other way to do this I don't have the machinery to hot rivet that back together I could make it but making all of that and spending the time for six rivets seems like overkill So I'll leave that riveted together. I can clean up this. I can clean up the underside of this. And then I'll bolt this back in with grade 8 bolts to here and uh, to the front. This is the front driver's side spring mount. You can see it's riveted in. It's got one here, here, and here. But look at this. Not sure if you can see that, but it's wiggling. And I definitely uh, don't want to put that back together. That could cause, I don't know, a vibration when you drive could cause all kinds of problems. I don't know exactly how I'm going to address this yet. Um, these are originally hot rivets. I don't have the equipment to do that. Look at how loose that rivet is there. This one isn't much better. So maybe I can pull them out, replace them with bolts. Maybe I can heat them up with the acetylene torch and smack it back down to tighten it up. Not sure yet. I'll do a little bit of research and looking around. If you've got any ideas, go ahead and put some down in the comments. This isn't going to be for a while. i got to get this whole thing coated. So. But it's something that's got to be addressed before I put it all back together. For the winter, while I do this project, I'm pulling it into the garage. Before I pull that frame in, though, I'm going to at least give it a once-over with some alcohol and wipe it all down. As you can see, I finally got it clean enough that I could bring it into the garage. I wanted to get most of the dirt, most of the rust off of it outside because it generates a huge amount of dust. I mean, it is a filthy, filthy job doing this. To get to this point, I've got about eight hours of work on it. It's still not ready for paint in all areas. Areas around these attached pieces still need to be cleaned up, but it's pretty close. I didn't video all of it because the reality is nobody wants to watch eight hours of somebody cleaning a frame. In fact, if you look at the analytics on most of my videos, most of you only watch maybe half of a video anyway. So we, uh, we skipped all of that. Still, like I say, I still have to do some cleaning. I do have enough time on it now, that I can at least give an opinion on the things that you're going to need to get a frame clean to this point. These are most of the tools I use to get to this point. Not here are things like a face shield, which I highly recommend. I used N95 masks because the amount of dust this thing creates, I didn't want to be breathing that in. I also used a hand scraper and a few other miscellaneous tools like that. But this, this was the stable of the workhorses. Now, I started out with some flap discs, some of these silica uh, abrasive discs, and wire wheels. Wasn't sure what was going to work best. These, they work really nice for stripping material, but boy, if you're working on anything that has edges, these things just, I mean, they wear out really, really fast. I think I probably would have gone through mm, probably eight or ten of them easily doing this frame if I had used these. So I actually abandoned this fairly early on. Maybe if you're doing a sheet steel and taking off paint or something like that, something nice and flat, these would work really well. But for a job like this, these just do not work. You're going to be changing them out a lot and you're going to be going through a bunch of them. I also had flap discs. I used a 60 grit. You can see that there. 60 is really nice. Uh, this seemed to take material off really, really well. It got down through the crud, and it actually would uh, get down into some of that porous stuff pretty well. So I used 
I think about three of these. It was either two or three. This is, I think, probably the third one. So this is what they look like after you've been using it for a while. But this did a lot of the work. The downside of these is if you have any areas, especially up around the engine and steering, where there's grease and power steering fluid, anything like that, these things clog up really, really fast. Once they get clogged with grease, you just got to throw it away. It, they just don't work at all. So I used the wire wheel. Now, what it turned out is I ended up using the wire wheel basically on everything. These are great because if there's dirt, there's grease, it, it doesn't care. It just flies right through it, tears it off, makes a big mess. But again, uh, there's no way to do this cleanly. So I used the wire wheel on everything. Then I came back and went over it with the flap disc. And it, it did a great job. Everything got really clean. A couple of other things I'd like to point out. If you're using cordless, you're going to be changing batteries a lot. Uh, I was going through batteries much faster than I could charge. So the reality is, you go through one of these, I'd have three batteries. I could probably run about an hour, hour and a half with those three by the time I ran out of juice and I couldn't use this anymore. So corded tended to be my favorite. Didn't have to worry about the battery. Didn't have to worry about where I'm going to get power. I just used the corded. The other thing that I ran into is on the insides of these and uh, in hard to reach places, this guard became a real pain in the ass. It, it just was always in the way. So I took the guard off of this cheap Chinesium piece, put this on. It worked out really, really well. This does not have a lot of power, so it would actually, I could stop the motor pretty easily by hitting uh, into something pretty hard, but it worked really well. It didn't burn up, which surprised me, but having this wide open was really useful. When you have it wide open like this, wear gloves or it will bite you. It's even more fun because this one doesn't have anything like a, a safety paddle switch. It's just on or off, so when it's on, it's running, and if that thing bites you, it jumps out of your hand, and it's going to take off across the garage until it gets into something or it pulls the cord out. I'm amazed it didn't happen to me. It did bite the glove a couple of times, but uh, fair warning on something like this. It's actually why I like this one. This has this paddle switch. So if it gets out of your hand, it comes up and it shuts off. I did use a cutting disc on a few things, used it to remove some wobbly rivets uh, and to get into some of those types of things. But generally speaking, I didn't need this except when I was breaking things down and if I had to take off like exhaust hangers and stuff like that. I did use the zip disc for it. Once I had everything fairly clean, I then went over it with denatured alcohol, just trying to get rid of the, the bulk of the dirt and grease on it. it. Still needs to be gone over again before I can paint it. So really, I'm gonna put these tools away. I'm gonna go back over and wipe things down. I'm going to start coating the frame. You can see that I need to do a little straightening right here on this piece. But I'm just gonna coat things. The idea is I'm going to go over it with a rust encapsulator with one coat as I go, get everything clean. Once I have it all done and cleaned, I'll go back over with a second coat of rust encapsulator. Then I'll do a third coat using chassis black and maybe even another, a fourth coat using chassis black. But I'm going to get started on that. That gives you an idea of the tools, at least, that you're going to need to do this type of work. Again, I've got about eight hours just to get to here. This is not a fast process. Once you've got everything relatively clean, at least all the big rust off, you want to go over it with a solvent. I'm going to use acetone. The first couple of runs, I did denatured alcohol because I had a gallon of it. But now I'm going to go back with acetone and shop towels. Wipe everything down. You want it so that when you wipe a rag across it, it doesn't come back dirty. Any dirt on here is going to prevent this paint from sticking. And I don't want to ever have to come back into this. So I want it clean before I coat it. 
to get up into little corners like up in here. I'm just using a Dremel tool with a wire wheel. Again, wear face shield at least with those because boy, those little wires come flying off of there and stick into anything. You don't want to get one of those in your eye. Pretty simple, but it's the only thing small enough that'll get up in there. You might also notice that I did not get all the way down to bare virgin metal everywhere. You can see here, the high spots I did, but there was a whole bunch of pitting going on, and so there's some low spots that either have some sort of rust, or they've got um, maybe mill scale. It's hard to say. This texture here I think is mostly rust pitting, because if you move forward on the frame, where there was a bunch of oil and power steering fluid on the frame, it's much smoother than this. So I think this is pitting. This is what that rust encapsulator is for. It's going to go from the oxidized iron to a reduced iron, so it'll quit rusting. And it will then seal that stuff in. So we're going to paint this on in the area that I just cleaned. Again, I'm going to end up doing clean paint, clean paint across a large section of this. So it's probably going to take, uh, I don't know, at least a dozen sessions in order to get the entire thing done. One thing to keep in mind as you're cleaning all of this is it's got lots of little holes. The flap disc and wire wheels don't get down into those. I found the best thing is just a rat tail file. Just run it down there. And look at all the crap that it brings up. I've got one coat of rust encapsulator on this. I'm cleaning all the holes. Then I'm going to go back and do a second coat of encapsulator before I do chassis black. But i got to get all of these holes cleaned. And I'm betting there are at least a hundred holes on this thing. So the frame has one coat of rust encapsulator on it. Before I go over and do it the second coat, I want to wipe it down and make sure it's clean. Do not use acetone for this. I repeat, don't use it. The acetone softens this and it actually picks it up. If you uh, wet a rag with acetone and wipe over it, the rag comes back completely black and the encapsulator is sticky. This works really well. It wipes it down, doesn't harm the finish at all. So I'm going to clean it up with this and then go over it with a second coat. You can go ahead and shake this, but if you're like me and you don't have one of those commercial paint shakers, you're not going to get it mixed very well. I've found that by the time you finish this, there will be a nice layer of thick stuff at the bottom. So always use a paint scraper on it, or a paint stir stick, I guess. Even now you can see it's got this big glob at the bottom. So use a stick and get that stirred up into it. You'll find that there are places that have holes that it's really difficult to paint. I find you just take the brush, get it a little bit wet, and then use your finger to smash it into that hole. Then wipe it off. Do the back side. And that does a pretty good job of getting the insides of these. Alright, we've got two coats of rust converter down. Next up, we're going to put chassis black on. According to the instructions, if it's been more than 24 hours since we did this, we're supposed to scuff everything with 320 grit sandpaper. Once you've scuffed it down with 320, it's going to be covered with a lot of dust. You can see if I wipe it down now, we get this. So I'm going to go over the whole thing with denatured alcohol in a rag, 
get all of that off before we paint it with the chassis black. This is much thinner than the rust encapsulator. It's probably made for spraying. The instructions do say it can be sprayed on or brushed on, and I'm going to brush it on. Just using a foam brush, just like before. Yeah, this is much, much thinner, but it goes on nicely. I'm going to lay down one coat, let it dry, do another one, then we can come back, do a review of all the tools and materials I use to get to this point. And there you have it. Second coat is done. Really, this is ready to start reassembly. Take a look. I'm quite pleased with how it turned out. It's pretty interesting if you look at some areas, like up here. This is where it was completely coated with power steering fluid and dirt. So there is absolutely no rust at all that, or pitting. This is in, you know, mint condition. We come down here though, you can see there were some areas, this is the worst area here, that there was quite a bit of corrosion that pitted it up. But even this, it cleaned up and coated real nicely. It's pitted, but it's not any kind of a safety or structural problem. It's not too bad. I've certainly seen a lot worse. The biggest challenge was the underside. Getting up in this, here, getting down in these areas, getting the inside of this, and especially getting up underneath the engine cross member. Those were the hardest areas to get. I still have to get where this is bolted down on both ends. So I'll worry about that after I get springs on it, get it up on axles, then I can reach those. Here are all of the tools that I used for this. A couple of grinders, found it much more useful to have more than one so that I could swap between them. Generally, I had a wire wheel on one, again, with no guard. Also gloves. This one, I have a cutoff disc on it right now, but it had the flap disc on it. Used a Dremel with those wire brushes. I'll show you those here in a minute. A hand wire brush, used that a lot, especially for thick stuff down in crevices. I used this a ton, the grease and stuck on stuff. Even with the wire wheel, it's tough to get off. A good uh, gasket scraper works really well. These are the chemicals that I used. I used about a half a gallon of denatured alcohol. I used this for several operations. Once I had cleaned everything up with the wire wheel, I wiped everything down with this just to get it fairly clean before I pulled it into the garage. Before the first coat of paint, when I had it nice and clean, I used acetone. I used about eh, half of this quart somewhere around there. And I used Eastwood Rust Encapsulator. I used, eh, there's probably about that much left in this. So I used two of these. The chassis black, it's also down about there, but this is the only the first one that I used. So I needed two cans of encapsulator, one can of chassis black. Brake parts cleaner is really helpful for being able to clean inside of those areas I pointed out that are hard to get to. I used, I think, four cans of this. And finally, let's look at all the consumables I used. As I mentioned, I tried one of these out. I actually didn't end up using them. I used one for a test, used about a third of it, and then I just uh, moved away from using it. This was the primary workhorse. I did everything with a wire wheel. I went through two of these. And, you know, you can see it's still got quite a bit left on this. So you could probably get by with just one. 
I did end up using a cutoff disc just for a couple of things. I used two flap discs. This is the brand new one. So it's a 60 grit. Again, I only needed two of these for the whole truck, or the whole frame anyway. I went through several of these in the Dremel. You can see I have a bunch of them. I just bought off of Amazon. So I think I used probably about a dozen of them. This kit has like this fan shape, this, and then this. I found this was the most useful. I used these almost exclusively. Occasionally I used a couple of those and that was it. I used gloves. Eh, probably half a dozen of those. I also used a whole ton of brushes. I bought these from Harbor Freight. This is the third package, so I needed three packages of these. They don't stand up too well when you're doing the rust encapsulator or the chassis black. They tend to come apart after about eh, half the frame, give or take. You also need some different sizes. These ones are really nice for getting down into the smaller areas that you can't reach. And then the wider ones for better coverage. I also used a bunch of blue rags. So the shop towel. Uh, two rolls. This is the second roll here. So eh, one and a half rolls, give or take. So there you have it. I need to clean up around the frame so I can get back to work on it. You can see I've got leaf springs over there. That's the next thing is to get those hung underneath of it. But otherwise, it is ready to start reassembling a vehicle. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.